The enemies of democracy have never been more ferocious or as numerous as they are in this age of an escalation of freedom. Divers all over the galaxy have been reporting in as combat ineffective, especially against the bugs. So today, we're going to open the doors to the armory. Welcome to the SES Emperor of Democracy. My name is Commissar Kai, and we're going to be taking a gander at three drastically different loadouts to combat the Terminid threat. We'll cover how to get your weapons to synergize with each other to increase the overall effectiveness of your loadout making you much more lethal. And of course, we're going to go over how to use the tools at our disposal to help our team. We're also going to touch on my thought process when it comes to building loadouts so y'all can have a better idea how to take these sets of weapons and really make them your own. That said, grab your popcorn, strap in, and let me introduce you to a few of my favorite toys. There's one thing I want y'all to take away from this one. It'd be that you drop in with seven weapons every time you dive. You get a primary, a secondary, grenades, and four stratagems. This is a lot of room to work with when it comes to crafting the perfect setup to liberate our enemies from their earthly forms. When you use all seven of your tools of democracy in concert, it doesn't just make you a little better. It takes you from a raw recruit to a straight up hardened veteran. If you find yourself neglecting one of your seven tools of spreading freedom, it most likely means there's some dead weight in your loadout that you need to trim. When I go to craft a loadout, I usually pick one or two weapons that I want to use, and then I build the rest around the strengths and weaknesses of those weapons. Let's take a look at our first example, a build I call Laser Team 6. The very first decision we need to make when making a new loadout is what niche we want to fill in a team. This can be a stealthy saboteur, a dependable all-rounder, a chaff-clearing maniac, an anti-tank specialist, or a whole host of other roles. For this first one, we're going to focus on the chaff clear. But don't worry, I don't leave my diver stranded. You always have at least one answer to any threat the bugs have. Starting out, I wanted to make a build that made the scythe into a good weapon, since it has always been Freedom's most neglected ambassador. This weapon has high damage, does not use ammo, and can now set enemies on fire. But its lack of penetration regulates it to only effectively dealing with light armored enemies. Now on its own, the scythe really isn't anything to write home about. It can overheat pretty easily and completely lacks any form of stagger. However, when we pair it with a laser cannon, now we're cooking with photons. Having two weapons that both use heat sinks instead of ammo means you can easily swap between the two and keep up a continuous line of fire on those socialist animals. The laser cannon also gives us enough of a punch to get through those medium armored enemies with ease. It's especially effective against Brood Commander Alphas and Hive Guard, but it can absolutely wreck hordes of weaker enemies when paired up with a scythe. These two weapons serve as the core of this build and is what we're going to base the rest of the loadout around. If this is sounding good to you so far, then consider liking the video. That one click helps out a ton with my mission to spread cooperation, team play, and good tactics to the Helldiving community. To see more content like this, subscribe to the channel for a new video every week. If you want to be a part of the platoon that focuses on team play and having a good time, Come join my commandos by clicking on the Discord link in the description below. Now that I've done my due diligence as a YouTuber, let's hop back into the rest of the loadout. Now that we've established our core weapons, let's talk about how to fill it out with stratagems, secondaries, and grenades. You might have noticed, but neither the laser cannon nor the scythe has any form of stagger at all. So to keep ourselves from getting mobbed by hunters or murdered by stalkers, we're taking stun grenades. These beauties are a bit overused, but they really fit here since it solves the main issue of our primary and support weapons, that being a complete lack of stagger. They also enable us to deal chargers when we've run out of other options by stunning them and nuking them in the butt. For a secondary, we're taking the grenade pistol, just so this doesn't happen to you. Do we have a means of closing these bug holes? Uh... Maybe? That, 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 we might need to just leave since we don't have yeah, anything. Yeah, we, uh... We don't actually have a way. My soul about left my body when I realized none of us had any real way of closing these dang things. So make sure you bring that grenade pistol. For stratagems, we got a couple of options, but here's what we're starting with. The laser guard dog, the eagle strafe and run, and the orbital precision strike. The laser guard dog helps a lot with those hunters leaping at your face while adding another laser beam for the nids to consider before showing their ugly mugs to the shining light of democracy. In addition, it'll keep setting enemies on fire while you make more space between yourself and the bugs. But you can swap it out for something more punchy like a sentry or orbital gas strike for the slow and stack with the burning damage, or some form of eagle airstrike. The strafe and run is here for a very particular reason. It absolutely obliterates bile spewers. While your weapons can take down these enemies, the strafe and run will do it in a hurry. You can also bust open the armor of chargers and titans so you can toast up their squishy bits. The strafe and run does all of this in addition to being a good general horde clear stratagem. So it's just a great generalist strat for us to reach for. 
You can also sub this one out for the Orbital Gatlin Barrage if you prefer for a similar effect, but we do need at least one stratagem dedicated to dealing with bile spewers in addition to our grenade pistol. Finally, we're taking the Orbital Precision Strike for fairly obvious reasons. It acts as a quick and low cooldown delete button for the more obnoxious enemies that the bugs have, those being Impalers, Chargers, and Titans. With a huge explosive radius and only an 80 second cooldown, it's real hard to leave this one at home. You can swap it out for the 500 kg if you want, but until that stratagem gets buffed, I really just think the Orbital Precision Strike is better, even when you consider having two charges. Now that you know what we're bringing and what you can safely sub out, Let's talk about teamwork. This loadout's primarily focused on clearing out hordes of enemies to give your team space to deal with the bigger threats. But we can still use our stun grenades to help our team out of tight spots or to set up our AT specialist for those clean kills on chargers. The general pattern you're going to want to have here is to stay in the back line of your team, laser beaming down anything with more than two legs. Since you can fire pretty much forever, it's a very effective way of culling the horde for your team. Make your team's lives easier and show the bugs the shining light of freedom and you'll be able to conquer any difficulty. Now let's take a look at our next loadout. Uh, that was kind of a, oh my god, my armor's clean, don't tell anybody. I never heard. With my shame laid bare, let's talk about our next loadout. The litter bug. If you have a burning hatred of any bugs bigger than my Honda Civic, then this one's for you. The core of this loadout's a bit unique in that it has three parts and they're all stratagems. Those being the Commando, the EATs, and the HMG emplacement. This core keeps your team covered on anti-armor since you'll be littering the map with tons of disposable anti-tank and HMG turrets. Since we're going to be rolling in rockets, we want to make sure our team knows it's okay to use our stuff in this particular loadout. With only a 70 second cooldown on the EATs and a 120 second cooldown on the Commando, you'll never find yourself out of ammo. But to make the most of these two stratagems, we need to understand how to use them first. On Super Helldive, these stupid jerks are everywhere, and they are tanky. Usually it's going to take two rockets just to strip the armor off of one of these sentient boulders. That is, unless you use my patented method of letting them run right past you, then slowly walking towards their leg as you fire. This is a stupid mechanic, and I wish it wasn't in the game, but walking forward gives you just enough forward momentum to bump the damage of the rocket up by a single point which is just enough to knock the armor off of Behemoth. Then we give him the one-two punch of our secondary weapon, the Bushwhacker. I find this combo both hilarious and effective. But all you gotta do is strip that leg armor off, then give him freedom's goodbye with all three barrels. You don't need the Bushwhacker to make this work, but we'll talk more about why we're taking it in a bit. Next we have the Commando, which is a little bit different from the EAT. It does not have as much damage, but it makes up for it with more rockets and the highest stagger in the entire game, even letting you wobble bile titans. This lets you set up some pretty amazing combos with teammates' orbital precision strikes and 500 kgs by just staggering these stilted freaks until our macro cannon or eagle one puts them to sleep. It also takes out any variety of chargers in just two shots to the face, and since it's laser guided, it's pretty easy to give them the old explosive facelift. Finally, for the core of our build, we have the HMG emplacement. Now this one is better on the bot front, but I found it works amazingly well with this setup. The reason being is pretty simple. Bugs will not go for it as long as you're not using it. Since we have a plethora of rockets for any curious chargers, it's pretty easy to hop off, blow them to pieces, and hop back on. Since the HMG emplacement devastates anything that isn't a charger or bile titan, it's even real good at killing impalers by shooting them in the face if you can see them, we can plop it right in front of a bug breach and just go to town. It's only got a 180 second cooldown at base, but you can get that down to just 150 seconds once you have all the upgrades. Since it never goes away and has a pretty short cooldown, down, this beast is fan a fantastic addition to your squad by letting anyone hop on and mow down the enemies of democracy. That's the core of the loadout, so now let's talk about what else we're going to bring to make it even better. Starting off, we have the Arc Blitzer. We're taking this weapon because it does not use ammo, has crazy amounts of stagger to keep us safe, and deals with all types of small and medium sized enemies. It's a great answer to bile spewers, especially in combination with our Orbital Gatlin Barrage. Being able to stagger lock enemies in our spicy rain is a great way to clear the field without really using any resources. This weapon does have one key weakness though. It only targets the heads of any enemy you fire it at. Normally that would be great, 
But it does mean this weapon is completely freaking useless at ripping into the exposed flesh of chargers. If you don't like this weapon, you can sub it out for anything with medium penetration and lots of stagger. To make up for this weakness, we're going to be reaching for the old bushwhacker. I already showed you all the wombo combo this thing has against chargers, but it's also incredibly effective at dealing with small groups of hunters or flocks of shriekers. Since our blitzer really struggles to hit shriekers, this seemed like the natural choice. Now you might be asking yourself, but Commissar, how do I close bug holes without the grenade pistol? Well, the answer is real simple. Regular grenades, or impacts if you're feeling brave. For this loadout, we're taking the base incendiary grenade since they are much easier to throw into a bug hole. But they also serve us well by lighting up groups of hunters or making bugs coming out of a breaches have very bad days. You can swap these out for whatever grenade you prefer, just make sure it can close those bug holes. The way you're going to use this loadout is pretty straightforward. Take out any big SOBs with your rockets and plonk down your HMG emplacement whenever there's a bug breach. Follow it up with some spicy rain and your fire grenades and you become the bane of bug breaches. The only real weakness this build has is against impalers, since four commando shots is not enough to take them out. Instead, you're going to strip the armor off one of their legs and light them up with the bushwhacker or more rockets. If the thought of impalers scares you, just swap out the Gatlin Barrage with the Orbital Precision Strike and you'll be good to go. You miss out on a bit of damage with this swap, but it can be a small price to pay for the peace of mind that it brings. That's it for the litter bugs, so let's move on to our final loadout. But first, a word from a crazed rat. Southwest. Wait a second. West. T4, are you having fun with all fire? That's not allowed. That's not allowed, yeah. Haven't you read like all the Reddit posts and the discussions in the Helldivers 2 official Come Discord? You're like actually in. not allowed to have fun. Come and take it from me. I have fire immunity. You don't. <laughs> Sometimes, I really love my platoon. Anyway, our final build's gonna be a quick one because I'm running out of time. This one I'm calling the Gun Nut, for fairly obvious reasons. It also happens to be my favorite right now. Again, for fairly obvious reasons. For this one, our core synergy's gonna be the MG43 and the AR-23 Guard Dog. But first, let's address the elephant in the room. Why take the bullet version when the laser version doesn't use ammo? Well, it's because it does more burst damage and actually staggers enemies. I do think this version of the guard dog is pretty underutilized because it does a good job of putting down bugs and bots both. From what I can tell, it doesn't seem to waste ammo often, and it usually hits enemies in the head if it can. Unlike our previous two loadouts, this one can be a little ammo hungry if you're not careful, so look for spare ammo packs. The workhorse of this build is going to be the MG43. This medium machine gun chews through packs of enemies, while still being able to pop a charger butt quickly. It comes with three different fire modes, but the only ones we care about are the 750 RPM, I need to save ammo, and the 900 RPM, for super earth modes. Swap this puppy to 900 rounds per minute whenever you need to pop a charger or just need things dead in a hurry, especially when paired with our stun grenades. The final part of our core synergy, that I forgot to mention, is the Eruptor. This massive cannon of a weapon is our answer to bug holes and how we're going to tell those bile spewers to get bent by the raw explosive power of managed democracy. Joking aside, it is an effective answer for medium-sized enemies, and can really put the hurt on packs of hunters as long as they're not too close. Combine that with the added utility of closing bug holes from up to 150 meters away, and you have a potent utility weapon that can still put the hurt on enemies. Since our weapons and guard dog are going to be doing most of the heavy lifting, we really only need an economic answer for bug breaches and something for bile titans. We can deal with impalers just by shooting them vigorously in the face. For breaches, I recommend either the Orbital Gatlin Barrage or the Napalm Strike. Both of these stratagems are available often enough to handle breaches when they happen, and they give you a bit of zone control to hold back the tide of bugs. To handle those troublesome bile titans, we brought, you guessed it, the Orbital Precision Strike. Trust me all, I want to like the 500kg, it's a cool stratagem, but unless you're bringing both, the Orbital Precision Strike should serve you better in general. For our last piece of kit, we're bringing the Bushwhacker again, but this time it's mostly an oh crap button for when we get ambushed by stalkers. We don't have a ton of stagger in this kit, but between our stun grenades and our pocket shoddy, we should be able to handle them whenever they appear. The way you're going to play this one's also pretty simple. You're going to be at the front of the team, mowing down anything you can see. Chargers should appear, you toss your stun grenades and give them the old bullet enema, or bonk them on the head with the orbital precision strike. We're also going to be making closing bug holes a priority, since our guard dog will help keep our feet clear any toe nibblers, while we run around redecorating their homes with bolter rounds. Make sure you stay stocked up on ammo and keep your team clear and you should be in for a good old time. That's all I have for y'all today, but I hope at least one of these loadouts tickled your fancy. If you have a cool idea for a loadout, drop it in the comments, because I'm always looking for new ways to liberate the enemies of Super Earth of their worldly desires. But until next time, this is Commissar Kai, signing out.